Okay, we're now live. I uh, want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in. We're going to, uh, like always, going to give uh, YouTube a few minutes to actually go out and send out notifications to let everybody know that we're live. Okay, we're now. Um, today, we have a, a special guest back in the house. What's up, what's up everybody? <laughs> JT Hustles, for anybody that may not know who I am. Yeah, we got Mr. JT Hustle uh, co piling us on, on this uh, episode we got. I got the actual call in. Um, if you would like to call in, uh, we have the call in number in the actual chat. I um, want to thank everybody again, like I say, for tuning in. Uh, if you hadn't already, go to Appliance Bootcamp, uh, purchase the course. Um, I'm adding new stuff daily. I'm here now. Uh, JT walked in on me trying to finish up these uh, washers and dryers that I got to flip before uh, Black Friday. Uh, so those, those are going to be coming up. Um, and uh, we're going to actually today talk about uh, uh, what something I've been saying a lot. Uh, it's going to be crawl before you walk. And uh, what I'm talking about crawl before you walk, JT, uh, I have a lot of people uh, who I'm seeing actually wanting to get into the business. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're actually, uh, I think, looking too far ahead. Um, they're looking at, um, at, at stuff that takes five or six years, maybe 10 years down the road before you can actually do it uh, money-wise and experience-wise, they're actually putting their focus there. Instead of putting their focus on the simple stuff, just going out there and getting their first service call and actually making the $250 and actually getting that under their belt and getting the confidence. I'm seeing people, uh, uh, not to call anybody out if you're in the chat and you're looking at it, but I'm seeing people asking about going to buy tractor trailer loads of used appliances to do a scratch and dent store. And I'm telling them, uh, attract the trailer load or use the plus that's a that you got you got to have a, a system in place and you got to have uh, a lot of stuff um and before you can start looking at track the trail loads and i wouldn't waste my time looking at them right now uh because you it's so much stuff you got to have in order for you to actually get to a point to actually flip a tractor and trailer load of appliances and uh, i'll just want to tell people to actually just start uh at the very beginning and just make $250 first. And then once you make your $250, work your way up there. Uh, go ahead. Oh, not to cut you off. Go ahead. Okay, so a question that I have for you then, uh -huh. as somebody that, um, you know, is an outsider, so uh -huh. uh, just trying to think as somebody that was in that situation. Uh -huh. Before my very first service call, mm -hmm. let's say I take the training and everything, mm -hmm. what, what would you recommend as far as like how much due diligence time would you recommend somebody that they took the training uh -huh but it's their very first service call before I even go to that person's house. Mm -hmm. um, how long do you think I should spend trying to research a, a refrigerator or washer or dryer or whatever it is? Or is it, or you saying it don't work like that? Like You mean before, um, before they go, let's say like they take the course, um, the first thing you wanna do after you take your course, you wanna then go out and get you a third party warranty company. Uh, now, once you get that third party warranty company and now they get ready, uh, they send you your first service call, yeah. How much research you need yeah, to do? Yeah, then? before I do my first service call, mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm past training uh -huh. and I'm with a third, let's say I'm already with the, the uh -huh. third party warranty company. Uh -huh. Like, if we're talking about crawling before you walk, uh -huh. like, what, what does that actually look like as somebody that's okay. like, okay, I took the training, uh -huh. uh, I got the insurances, I, I signed up. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I know people want to start making money fast, uh -huh. but you can move so fast that you end up hurting yourself. Right. So what would you recommend to somebody brand new? Should they spend... Mm -hmm. I don't even know if it, if it makes sense to ask in time. Like, should they spend an hour, two oh, hours, no, no. or yeah, should they wait you. until they know? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What you want to do? I did a horrible job asking. <laughs> no, you did not. You're great. <laughs> uh, so, nah, you need to spend. Uh, I would say, uh, I'm gonna say one to two days. Now, I ain't talking about the whole day, mm -hmm. but I'm saying um, uh, a minimum of uh, of about eight hours. That I would say of actually researching the actual um, that, appliance. that appliance, that specific appliance, not just refrigerated, but if you got a problem with a Samsung uh, model number RF or whatever, mm -hmm. you go look up that specific appliance, go to Appliance Tology, read everything that you can find on there. Even if it's not even specific to the actual problem. If your problem with the ice maker and you see something with the defrost, you need to read everything. Okay. Uh, uh, go there and look and see how the part, how it comes apart, get the service manual. You want to actually study that. Um, and anything like, for instance, they're saying um, that the ice maker isn't working. 
you want to then look and read everything about the ice maker, see how the ice maker goes in, how you can put it in diagnostic mode. Uh, go look at the prices of the ice makers. So when you get there, you're not thrown off um, and, and starting from uh, starting off totally green. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, well, listening to what you're saying, another question that I have mm -hmm. is, okay, I, I spend my eight hours mm -hmm. doing my due diligence, researching that appliance. Mm -hmm. Would you also say that on my very first service call, I should I should charge blue book prices or should I charge a little bit less because I know this is my my very well they don't know it but I'm saying mm -hmm. for my reputation for mm -hmm. my brand should I should I lowball it just to get the experience or would you still say your very first service call charge them okay. retail price or okay. blue book price? yeah your uh, very first service call uh, mm -hmm. you'll be doing third party warranty yeah um, you're gonna be charging them eighty five dollars per hour you're mm -hmm. gonna charge them for an hour and a half for service. So you're going to charge them 125 for going out there and diagnosing. And then you're going to charge them another hour and a half to go put the part on. Uh, so uh, that'll be another 125. So you want to bill out at 250. Regardless of my experience. Regardless though, of your experience. Yeah, 250. Because uh, it's not uh, it's not really your experience. Uh, it's the actual uh, going rate for that repair. Okay. Um, it's going to take you longer to do the repair because you're in a, in experience, but you're going to complete that repair. Mm -hmm. And as your experience get better, you that's how you get your increase in your money because what happens is going to take you less time. You can do more service calls, and that's how your money goes up. Okay. But if you was to go work at, say, like a Sears, mm -hmm. Sears is not going to cut them or the customer a break because it's your first time going out. Yep. They're going to charge you the same the thing, retail, retail price. price. Yeah. Cause that's the going rate for that repair. Okay. Yeah. I want to take. It. I'm gonna. I'm gonna save my other question. Nah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. But now nah, that's oh. the that's the price for the retail repair. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So another question I have, and then we are gonna keep going. I'm, <laughs> go ahead. I promise. Go ahead. So um, for my uh, again, all the new people that's here, shout out to all four the yeah. people that's here. Smash that yeah. like button. Share yeah. this video yeah. with anybody you think it can help. Yeah. Um, we talking about crawling before you walk. So yeah. I'm putting myself in the mind of somebody yeah. brand new. So we already established the fact that I I'm, took the mm -hmm. training, signed up with the warranty company, mm -hmm. spent eight hours of due diligence time, and now I'm going to charge $85 an hour, mm -hmm. so I should get $250 that first call. Mm -hmm. As as a brand new newbie who hasn't fixed any appliances um, for my own business, mm -hmm. are there any appliances that you say that's a bad first appliance? The reason why I ask you that uh -huh. is because I know a lot of people that are afraid of refrigerators. Mm -hmm. I know seal systems. Right. So let's say, let's throw that out the window. Uh -huh. Of course, somebody brand new, their first job mm -hmm. being a seal system mm -hmm. don't make sense. Mm -hmm. But would you say, um, cause I know people that are in the industry, mm -hmm. Would you say that very first job, if, if that refrigerator comes through, should they accept it or should you? No, say you it? take it. You take it. You're gonna regardless, uh, regardless, because you're gonna have to fight that. You're gonna have to fight that monster. Mm -hmm. If you start trying to dodge your appliance for a specific brand, uh, yeah, you, you find out mm -hmm. that it's always gonna keep coming looking for you. Okay. The universe plays tricks like that. What you're trying to dodge, that's what's gonna come for you. It's kind of like a uh, uh, Bernard. Uh, he, he was talking about he played baseball. And he was like, if you scared somebody gonna hit the ball to you, that ball is gonna come to you every time. <laughs> so the same thing with those appliances. If you if you're trying to dodge uh, a washer, a dryer, a range, you'd be surprised. It's, it seems like the universe is gonna constantly keep sending that to you until you master it. Because mm -hmm. you're gonna have to do all of them. So whatever comes, you're gonna take it, regardless of the name brand. If it's Thermador, GE, whatever, you take it and you 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 attack it the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, nah. Uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't run for from any of because you're gonna you're gonna have to you're gonna have to conquer the monster at some point in time. Okay. Yeah. So um, but uh, yeah, I want to tell you all, just just you gotta have to crawl before you walk, and um, the call number is in the actual chat. Um, because what's happening? Some of you all are looking so far ahead that you never really get started. Uh, you, you're, you're, you're all in, I don't want to say la-la land, but you kind of are. And I think I think what happened, uh, because we don't really get to see entrepreneurship so much in our uh, culture, um, that sometimes when you got a chance to really do business, uh, you get more excited about just talking about the business rather than going out there participating and doing business. So some people that sit there and to talk about uh, 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 going out and buying a truckload of appliances and being able to talk to his friends and, and, and family members about it. it. It seems, it seems nice to do that, but you, you, you're a long way from getting able to being able to do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, uh, uh, for some people, I, I've seen people call and ask me a lot of questions about, uh, sealed systems. And then I find out they had never done a service call before. 
So right now you don't need to be worried about sealed systems because you don't have the equipment to do it. Uh, you haven't been out there doing your first service call. You haven't even got a contract. Uh, sometimes I see a lot of people asking uh, about do a certain company pays this and pays that. And can you get the rates that uh, Mike Sneed is talking about? And then they kind of find out they haven't went out and got their first service call yet oh, to even tell if they if the rates are correct. So just go out there and accomplish getting that first $250 then once you get that first $250, you want to duplicate that every day. Do the exact same thing every day and then start stacking up on top of that. Don't start getting, getting caught up on these, uh, uh, what we call used to call rabbits. Uh, every time uh, somebody releases a rabbit, you go look and try to run after that rabbit. Concentrate on getting that first 250 down, get your business up and running. Do those one or two stops per day. Uh, same thing, don't, don't get so, uh, uh, don't, don't feel bad if you're not out here uh, getting those $5,000 and $6,000 checks per week that you were seeing some of the people who've been doing it for a year now popping up, showing you. Um, you're going to get there eventually, but right now you need to do that first $250. And then your time will come in the next year where you'll be making that uh, $5,000 and, uh, and $10,000 per week check that you send those people posting. So don't feel bad if you're not doing that right now. Just make that two fifty dollars and get the wolf away from the door, learn to trade, and then your money will come. I got a question that might sound a little silly, Go ahead. but I think it's no silly question. Anybody Go ahead. that's new, uh -huh. this is the, the way I'm going to word it. Uh -huh. Okay, can you give us examples of like this is how you know you should be crawling? Because it's um again, it's certain people that I know that they say that they got warranty companies that mm -hmm. have a lot of work in their area. Mm -hmm. They just trying to run up a check, especially mm -hmm. now it's fourth quarter, Christmas right. is coming. So like, can we get some tangible? You should be crawling if like. I'm going to just make this up oh, and game, just for an example. Uh -huh. Like, I, I think, okay, if it takes two hours uh -huh. to do a, a lid switch, is uh -huh. it something like that? So, like, I understand that uh, we talking about you should crawl before you walk, but for the people out there that are in the business uh -huh. and they have all of these opportunities thrown at them, naturally, uh -huh. if you never made this kind of money, you trying to accept every job uh -huh. the warranty company throw at you. Uh -huh. So, what advice could you give them to say, okay, I'm making 250 a day, but the warranty company will, will let me make a thousand dollars a day? Right, I got you. Yeah. Uh, uh, same thing. If you uh, if you go into the gym and you never lift weights before, and you see somebody on the other side bench pressing 400 pounds, and you never lift before in your life, you no, know, you can get up under that 400 pounds <laughs> if you want to, but you can get somebody a spot and pull it off the rack. But it's gonna crush you. It'd be the same thing with those uh, appliances. Those warranty companies will give you as much work as you would take, and they'll give you, they'll send you as much work down there if you want. But if you've never done it before, it will actually do the same thing. It will crush you, and it'll put you. It'll really. It, it will put you out business. So if you're somebody who just getting started, how how, how would not, not to cut you out because I know from the outside mm -hmm. looking in, if they throwing me all this money mm -hmm. and I've never been in business, mm -hmm. like you know, it, it might sound like how is them giving me more money gonna put me out of business? Okay, how how getting getting more work yeah, than, more you, can work. Yeah, than yeah. you can handle will put you out of business. Okay, uh, for somebody who who goes out and they take a We'll, we'll do it two ways. Somebody mm -hmm. who actually goes out and uh, they take a contract where they got supply the parts. Mm -hmm. So now you go out there and you get your first service call and they saying, okay, it's going to be uh, it's gonna be a net 30 or a net 10, even a net five. They, they say pay you within five days. Mm -hmm. They'll send you out there and they'll give you maybe 10 service stops. Of those 10 service stops, you might have to uh, spend maybe uh, 50 to $60 per appliance. Mm -hmm. So now you got uh, the first day you don't spend six uh, six hundred dollars. Uh, the second day uh, come up you don't spend another six hundred dollars. The third day you don't spend six hundred dollars. Now you tapped and you ain't got your first check yet, mm -hmm. and you still now you're actually waiting on them to send you your check so you can actually buy more parts and buy gas and stuff. Mm -hmm. So what you end up then you end up uh, uh, dodging your customers. You end up not answering the phone because you don't have the money and you starve for cash. Yeah. And so then what happened when you do get that cash, they only gonna pay you for that first uh, first day that you went out. Mm -hmm. So even though you got paid, never catch up. you're right, you ain't gonna catch up. You got paid for that first day. You still got three or four days that's out there. You ain't, mm -hmm. got, your, you ain't, got, your, um, you ain't got your buffer build up yet. Yeah. All right, uh, if you get one where somebody say they're gonna supply the parts for you, but you um but uh uh you don't know how to repair stuff in a timely manner mm -hmm. so what's going to happen you're going to go out there the first time like you said it's going to take you two hours to do a lid switch 
and you only got a couple of hours in, in a day to actually go out there and do your work. And now um, uh, you go, they're going to send you eight calls. You're only going to get two done and you're going to um, you're going to have six going over into the next day. Mm -hmm. The next day, they're going to send you eight more. Mm -hmm. and you're only going to get two done. Now you got yeah. 14 going over into the next day. Mm -hmm. The next day, you're going to have uh, only two you're going to get done and you're going to have uh, 24 going over. So now while you out there trying to work, uh, you're going to have customers calling you 12. With, with that situation, mm -hmm. matter of fact, I know. Of, of somebody that reached out to me this is like many uh -huh. months ago uh -huh. and um okay so i understand it the way that you explained mm -hmm. it but that same person had a perspective of well that's just a sign that i should hire somebody okay so can we speak because they'll say well okay i got all of this work i can mm -hmm. only do this mm -hmm. like you since you have the years of experience mm -hmm. know okay maybe i should scale back they're mm -hmm. thinking in their mind I need to hire somebody and have them shadow me right. and then go put them on jobs so that we can get four done a day and right. hire some more people. Right. And now you end up with 20, 20 workers your first year. Right. And we have, uh, we have, uh, I have uh, maybe a hundred people who have <laughs> thought that and, and done yeah. that. So what happened, because you're, this, if this is your first time ever doing business before, mm -hmm. you don't know uh, everything that goes into hiring somebody. The, uh, you need, need to have the policies and procedures. Yeah. So you don't know how to fix the appliances. Even if you go and you hire somebody who's experienced at fixing the appliances, mm -hmm. um, you're not experienced at, at managing him. Mm -hmm. So now you don't know how I'm going to get him his work orders. Yep. You're not going to know how you're going to collect the money from him. Mm -hmm. You're not going to know um, how to actually uh, re receive the work orders back from him, from him telling you uh, what's wrong and ordering the parts. So now you got, mm -hmm. you know, created another thing on the back end. Now you've created the need for an office staff. Mm -hmm. And now you uh, you don't know how to uh, put an office staff together. Now you're trying to do you're trying to do like three or four things. You're trying to now go out there run some service calls. You're mm -hmm. trying to go out there and actually manage <laughs> uh, manage Thanks. that technician. Mm -hmm. You're trying to uh, actually get back home and do the office staff work, and you can't do none of it well. You got all this <laughs> stuff going over. So now you got three crazy things that's killing yep. you at the same time. And you uh, and yeah, and on top of that. Most of the time, uh, if you're just getting started, you don't have the finances to supply them with their own vehicle. You don't have mm -hmm. the uh, finances to, uh, to to be able to make their first paycheck as they come. That's why a lot of times you especially see, uh, I, I, I have to say, in, in our community, when I, when I would go out to actually uh, uh, bring somebody in to work with me, mm -hmm. first thing they know, I'm gonna get paid on time. Mm -hmm. Because what happened a lot of times in our community, because we go out there and we say, I got a lot of work, but we ain't got no money to pay people. Mm -hmm. uh, we will actually get them to come work for us. Then come Friday, we would tell, I ain't got my money yet. As soon as I get my money, I'll, I'll pay I'm, I'm going to pay yeah. you. And then your workers say, man, I don't work. Hey, and I got, I'm mad. Yeah. I got to pay my bills because we ain't got enough to do it. Or if something comes up, which always could come up with the warranty company, you think your money coming on Friday, it don't come on Friday. Your, uh, the people, you can't pay them. And then you, you say, the money will be here Monday. Monday come, you can't pay them. And then when the money do come, it's less than what you thought. Yeah. So now you, you're looking on that money to pay you and to pay them and yeah. and, that, and yeah. go buy your parts and it's not enough. So now uh, your workers and stuff don't have confidence. And if you ever miss one time of not paying somebody, they're not gonna have any confidence in you mm -hmm. and not gonna do any work. So you're not, uh, you don't wanna never go to that that, that point where you, uh, where you can't pay nobody. I will knock on wood, I never had a chance. A problem where I couldn't pay nobody. But you, uh, you get one time with some uh, not paying somebody, they not they not gonna want to do any work for you. So that's why you uh, you don't want to go there. Then you want to go out there and start off crawling and learn the trade, and then you start to backfill at uh, uh, at the positions once you learn them. Once you learn the technical technician position um, and how to fix stuff and how to route your calls, how to route the, that's another thing too. If you get a bunch of calls, you don't know how to put a route together. So yeah. you'll be doing a lot of what we call windshield time, where you're driving one side of town back and forth and you don't know how to put the route together to actually bring uh to make a uh, to make a circle uh mm -hmm. you don't know how to do that so when you uh when you start uh uh having calls scattered everywhere um and then you don't know how to space out the time enough uh so you at one call trying to finish up and somebody calls and say you're supposed to be here at 10 and mm -hmm. it's now 11 where you at so all that stuff going to start to uh, start to play so uh, that's why you, you learn the technical part. And then once you learn the technical part, you can actually backfill and bring a technician in. Or uh, uh, the easiest part most of the time is the office part. You can, uh, once you learn uh, how to schedule your calls and 
how to ask, uh, how to actually put your service calls in, order parts. You can then backfill somebody and answer the phone and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you that gives you time to, to free up a little time for you to actually get some more calls done, stack your cash. After you get your cash stack, then you can bring a technician in to actually help you out. Now, the first technician you bring in is not gonna um, is not gonna be able to remove you from the actual truck. So you're gonna actually be out there with them. Uh, I always found out it takes two two technicians to get me out the truck. Okay. Yeah. When when you say learn the technical side, are you saying that it is wise or is, you recommend that until I personally say, you know, if anything goes wrong with any common household appliance that I know I can fix in X amount of time, like master that first before I go out and try to hire somebody? Or what you mean when you say learn, learn the technical side? Learn, learn, or are you saying just have a foundational understanding? You have a foundational understanding yeah. and your approach to solving problems. Okay. So, uh, you know, technology changes so much. You're, not, you're always going to be learning new stuff and you're going to be seeing stuff that you've never seen before. Okay. But your approach to actually uh, solving that problem, once you get that approach down, then you can fix anything. Mm -hmm. So once you get that approach down and you're confident enough where you can fix anything, then you can start bringing in another technician um, and let them go. Now, if you're somebody who, who know how to manage people, if you're somebody coming from a, a position in corporate America where you have a lot of technicians, a lot of people up under you, mm -hmm. that's a little different there now because now you know how to manage people um, and you know, how to, uh, you, you know how to manage somebody. You can then go out and hire te technicians and mm -hmm. put them out there because you know how to, how, to, how, how to manage people and how to put the processes and stuff together. Uh, not really manage people. You know how to you know how to put processes together to get what you want from people. Uh, so then you can actually put them out there, and you can be in the back end like you were in your corporate setting mm -hmm. and, and run it that way. But still, if you're gonna do that, um, you're gonna need to have uh, have some money stacked up to get you to the point where you start to get a draw on your money. Okay. When, when we're talking about hiring tech, so once we get that foundational understanding, mm -hmm. now we hiring techs. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend people to find? Like what kind of person should I hire, right? Because uh, my fear would be, maybe I can go out and find somebody that's been doing it for years for mm -hmm. another company, mm -hmm. but how do I know if they're getting over on me, right? Or so mm -hmm. do you recommend just go out when you are ready to start to hire people? Mm -hmm. Do I go out and try to find uh, people that know how to fix appliances, but they underpaid and I offer them a better job? Or do I just find regular people off the street and train them? Does it matter or? Um yeah, there's, there's a couple of things you need to do when you, uh, in appliance repair. Mm -hmm. uh, first, you've got to consider who your customer base is. Mm -hmm. um, like, for instance, uh, I got, uh, I, I, if I'm over in the governor's club, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to have a certain technician that can go interact in the governor's club. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's going to be a technician that uh, that uh, going to be very polished. They can go out there. He might not be the best technician that I have, mm -hmm. but he he gonna have the best soft skills uh, yeah. around because they care more about the soft skills mm -hmm. and and whatnot. Um, and they're not so inconvenienced if uh if, if if they have to wait a little longer to get it fixed. Mm -hmm. You know, they have two or three refrigerators. They, you know, life is not really really pushing them. Yeah. Now, if I'm in Southeast Raleigh. I might not have to have the most polished person because mm -hmm. the household he's going into is going to uh, is going to be a totally different household. Yeah. So when he walk into Southeast Raleigh, if I take my most uh, my most polished technician that I, I'm got in Governor's Club, mm -hmm. not bring him into Southeast Raleigh, he go knock on the door. Where you at? My, mm -hmm. Come get this MF and refrigerator. My medicine <laughs> gone bad, and, and my uh, my food gone bad. Mm -hmm. And no, they 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 you know it's a little bit more aggression coming out, mm -hmm. but uh, they're not really mad at you. It, I had that where it actually uh, startled and rattled uh, a polished technician mm. where he said, man, you need to come out here because I think these people are mad. Oh. And I'm like, nah, that, they, they're good. Just go fix it. Mm. And with them, uh, it's, a, it's a totally different customer that you're interacting with. Mm. So with that, I will find a technician who can who can fix stuff that um, who's a little bit more comfortable in that setting been, been uh, going into that going into that environment. He doesn't feel threatened. He 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 um if he knows that he needs to lock his van every time he goes, he gotta take his yeah. tools versus if you in the governor's club, you no, know, you can leave it wide open and you ain't gotta worry about it. So I have somebody who's more aware of the surroundings mm -hmm. they're in there. Uh, as far as getting somebody that uh knows how to repair appliances, mm -hmm. uh 
that is kind of uh, up until now you, you couldn't find nobody because nobody training nobody mm -hmm. to repair appliances. But what you want somebody who doesn't mind working with their hands. Okay. And I always found out if I went to like uh, I would go take my cars to Jiffy Lube and get them mm -hmm. to get them serviced. And if I saw a young man that presented himself well, I know he don't mind getting dirty. He know how to use hand tools. Um, I would then look for that guy and bring and bring them on and show them how to do appliance repair. Okay. And if we, we say about how many people are doing it now, it doesn't take long to get them up and running. Let them ride with you for a little while. And then uh, uh, from, I, I can let them ride with you for about a week or two. And then I, I have them out there doing service calls. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Now it's y'all turn for y'all questions. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't ask way too many. What's up, Stan Banks, my brother, man? Okay. Answer your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Stan in the, in the chat? Yeah. Okay. Somewhere in there. All right. Uh, I, I got to grab my glasses. I said I had them so I could. Could see now. I got to put them on so I, I I can see. Hey, we got okay. How you doing? Okay. Well, would it be a live stream on Thursday or not? A Thursday is a turkey day. I might do something from the house. Uh, I don't know yet. I have to see uh what the mistress say. All right. Uh, hey, what they say? Hey, JT. What's up? What's up, everybody? Smash that thumbs up button. You haven't done so already. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got Kevin. What's up, Mike and JT? What's, what's up, up, everybody? All right. Untamed can go. If you would like to call in, uh, we're gonna take a couple of calls there. Uh, that's the call in. All right. Uh, 89 Dr. Funk. Hey, how you doing? Because we don't read. Hey, how you doing? All right. Um, they got networking going on there. All right. All right. Let's see here. Uh, downtown gutter. Say what's up, JT. What's up? What's up, everybody? All right. Hey, how you doing? BK from the Rockies. All right. Uh, how you doing, Mr. Mechanical? What's up, Mike? JT keep spreading that knowledge, fellas. Okay. What you got going on right now, JT? I, uh, I've been catching you doing a lot of stuff with the pallets and a lot of other businesses. Oh yeah, man, man. I'm really big now on like, well, I've always been on mo a big on multiple streams mm -hmm. of income. So I want to build out my personal JT Hustles channel mm -hmm. to be a channel that regardless of um, what your interests are, we're going to have something for everybody as far as making money goes. So I'm going to present so many different ways to make money. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to find something that you like and, um, I'm also starting a second channel and I'm signing content creators um, for that channel where mm -hmm. it's going to be more entertaining, but just trying to build a media company, mm -hmm. looking to buy a radio station. If y'all got a radio station for sale, <laughs> like, there you email go. Email Mike. <laughs> uh, so much joy. If my state requires a license, how do I go about getting into home warranty companies? Uh, what state do you have that requires a, a home warranty license? Um, uh let me know what state you're in that requires a license all right greg v hey uh my first call i research about two to four hours okay yeah okay. there you go that's good that's good time that's good time girly girl plans what's up all right downtown gutter now uh greg b he uh he actually he actually came from a, a i think electrical background so he knew how to use a meter and stuff that's another thing too but before you go make sure you know how to use your meter and stuff don't get there don't know how to turn it to volts don't know how to turn it to ohms make sure you use learn your meter and all that stuff when you before you get there mm -hmm. uh downtown gutter timers are expensive if i buy a 60 dollars washer and spend over a hundred dollars on a timer, there's no profit. Uh, I guess they talking about flipping, uh, scratching dental appliances. Uh, yeah, somebody wanna know what state requires an appliance repair license. Okay, they got one tomorrow. Uh, uh, UI dispenser replacement, they, they got a lot of network. That's All the right. thing, a lot of people come in here now and they, they go to the network and, and it's like a, like a uh, family reunion. All right. Uh, how about for premium appliances and an extra man? Uh, premium appliances. Uh, when you're talking about, I guess you're talking about the the uh, we're talking about the price. Uh, the first time going out mm -hmm. uh, for premium appliances. When you first start off with the third party warranty company, uh, you want to still charge this that eighty five dollars per hour. Uh, the reason why I'm telling you that because the third party warranty company that algorithm. If you get above uh, about three hundred dollars per uh, per uh, per per uh, appliance, then they're gonna watch them call. They're gonna come back and say that you're, you're charging too much and they're gonna cut your calls and, and kick you out the network. But if you stay below $300, they'll give you enough calls where you can actually make it. So you gotta stay, you gotta stay uh, that, around that 250. Now, once you start going out and you start doing cash calls, uh, you're gonna go to the blue book and the blue book then will actually then uh, uh, accommodate for premium appliances. An extra man, you need to get your hydraulic lift cart 
or an Ollie, uh, an oven uh, a dolly to go. Uh, we got three, three, six in three, three, six. Hey man, I, I thought it was a law against the president and the vice president being in the same place. <laughs> hey, hey, what's up, Slick? <laughs> hey man, y'all. Uh, man, I just checking with you after this long day. Yeah, uh, uh, y'all, you working past Thanksgiving, or you, you gonna take the week off uh, after after Wednesday? Uh no, we gonna work, man. I you mean, working? What day you? What grind, day you? The grind off? don't stop, man. What day you taking Thanksgiving off? Thanksgiving won't for me, man. <laughs> oh, oh I gotta my take God. Off Thursday. You taking Thursday off? For me, man. Oh yeah, yeah. We eat with the family, but no, no. We we ain't doing no. We ain't. I don't see taking off Friday and Saturday and Sunday. I, mean, I don't know. I mean. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm going to take off. Uh, I'm going to take Wednesday going to be our last day. Um, I'm. Uh, Mike, you, you don't work anyway, man. <laughs> it is work. When, when they work and I have to work. So I'm going I'm to take that time. Hey. Off. Uh, but I need to be working because we were already booked to the middle of December. Yeah, I got a. Uh, I'm gonna call you tomorrow. Not I got to call you. Yeah. Calling that. yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you a story, but anyway, hey, y'all be good, man. Peace All right, everybody. thanks. Slick. How far out would you book out? Um, like if people keep calling, will you keep? Yeah, I keep out indefinitely. Like, yeah, I keep booking you book out. Out to February. Yeah, I, I keep, going, yeah, um, I keep booking out. Cause what happened? Uh, as long as they call, I, I tell them if they want to schedule, they'll schedule. Cause mostly right now, everybody's booked out. Okay. Um. Um. So, uh, six, seven, eight. You're on six, seven, eight. You're on. But yeah, everybody's booked out. I okay. just keep on going, and I keep a couple of spots open to go back and put parts on. Okay. But yeah, somebody want to take it, they'll take it. Six, seven, eight. You're on. Uncle Mike. Hey, what's up? Because you don't read. What's going on, JT Money? What's up, <laughs> big dog? What's up, man? <laughs> Chilling, bro. Watching your content, loving it. Finna That's take this little grand and go ahead and buy into this pallet business, you know. It's beautiful, man. Just like you said, just explain it and spreading out the seven streams, man. I learned a lot from you two, basically the but you taught me to create one stream and then let those streams break down into other, those other streams once you master the one stream. So and yeah, man, everything you saying is right, Uncle Mike. I, I signed up with Amazon and I signed up with HS and I signed up with Tarm. And then I was flooded with work. I couldn't keep up with everything. Thing. <laughs> and and I just had to shut two of them down and focus on mastering the skill, you know, and mastering, you know, window times, all the same stuff you're talking about. You know, I, I would book a job in Jonesboro. Then I book a job in Lithonia. Yeah, y'all don't know <laughs> much about Atlanta, but that's an hour ride away. And wow. you do one in the morning, then one in the afternoon. But every time you get to the job, you know, you're not just telling these people it's an hour and a half. You really got to break this machine down and find out what's wrong. Because if you don't, now your numbers is bad. Now you order the wrong parts. Now you're a part monkey throwing parts at a machine, not really knowing exactly what the problem is and just taking my time to do it over and over and over. And that was another thing. So I was afraid of dishwashers, right? Yeah. First, I was afraid of refrigerators. And all of a sudden, I got six of them in a row, right? <laughs> yeah. That was that was crazy. But now I got it down pat. Anytime I hear somebody say, oh, it's water coming out the refrigerator, out the refrigerator, out the freezer. Well, let me check the drain tube. That's that's a <laughs> nugget for you all. Let me check the drain tube. And all of a sudden, when you check that drain tube, it's clogged, which is good. You know, the defrost system's working, the water dropping down. I'm, I'm dropping nuggets for somebody. I don't know who probably got that job <laughs> in the morning, but that's what you probably should look for. But it's just been a blessing to be a part of what we got going. Uh, man, I don't know nothing about no wolf no more. I don't know about no wolf by no door. I'm trying to buy property and flip like you brothers, man. I'm telling y'all, y'all are such an amazing inspiration to me and, and everything y'all got going. So I just want to tell you, I love you. I ain't got nothing really to talk about. I just want to say I love you. Shout out to my guy, JT Money. I just put my cousin on you. He like to drive vans. He talk, he drove trucks before. I told him, get a courier van. No, it's to, you know, to get the little fear, John. You can't do this. You can't do that. I said, I got a partner that had a felony. He doing it. You tripping. Let me shoot you. And so he watching your stuff, man. And he trying to get it together. He trying to get a van. I'm going to help him get a van if I, if I can. Sometimes People don't like handouts, you know. I don't know why. We'll go to a bank and ask for money, but when your family say they can do it for you, sometimes you don't want to. So he in the middle of that. But I might just give him something for Christmas. Ha, ah, here go $3,000 van. He think it hurt me, but I just made that three days. You know, that ain't no, that ain't no money. But anyway, I just love y'all. 
You're doing a great job. Continuously, Uncle Mike. Love you, JT, man. Y'all stay up. I got like 1,500 lined up, Uncle Mike. I got four in one house, four <laughs> appliances in one house and another. That's $1,500, man. I'm, life is good. Yeah, in Atlanta. Yes, sir. Yeah, you came to Atlanta. JT I ain't even holler at your boy. I was I'm mad at you. I ain't Atlanta. know what to do. I'm going to be back in Atlanta soon. Man, I'm uh, dinner is on me. Please, I got you. I text you. I got your number. Wendy, after things huh? from the day, I'm gonna be there. Okay, cool. I'm the farmer dude. I don't know if you remember in the class, but <laughs> yeah. we be rapping all the time. Yeah, all right, man. yeah. So dinner on me. I'm taking you out, and I want you to see this little property. I, I mean, we we'll talk about that money stuff, that big dog <laughs> stuff later. But I want you to see this little property I'm trying to do. I don't know. I bought this book. Cause uh, Uncle Mike ain't really broke it down to us, you know, step step. <laughs> he's showing us, but you know, I already got the property looked at. I'm looking at somebody telling me like they called him a inspector, and he telling me it's something wrong with the roof and the foundation. But I'm trying to get the steps on what to do step by step to get the property up and run. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. To get it where it needs to be at. I don't know nothing yeah. about that. I be YouTubing it, but anyway, the point is with this information, we are growing. Uh, yes, it is steps, everybody. No, don't rush. You only need two hundred fifty dollars. If you do one job a day, that's one twenty seven fifty. You do that five times a day, you make it six hundred dollars a week. Yeah. Six times four is twenty four. You can get an apartment, a car, uh, pay all your rent like water just with one job a day. <laughs> yeah. So be diligent with your jobs, man. And once you really learn one way to fix it, it really teach you how. It's like you run into the same problem every day in different people's houses. Mm -hmm. So just take your time to learn the skill. Uncle Mike is giving you a masterful thing. He's not giving you one business. He's giving you like five. If you really just count all the things he keeps adding to us. Then JT got set up for you just because he's a player like that. <laughs> you're in a great position and in a great place for great people, man. So I love you. Don't be afraid, y'all. But just do diligence and follow the steps, and you're going to be great. And when they, whenever you're ready for other streams, he got a business where you can make $1,000 in two hours on some pallets. I'm trying to tell you. You need to watch this joint. It's crazy. Yeah. So it's out there for you. Continue to be blessed. I love you. Love you, JT, man. I'll holler at you, bro. I'm going to text you a little later. And pre right. Appreciate it, Uncle Mike. No problem. Thanks. All right, peace. All right. Also, I think what a lot of people don't realize is that um, you know, if you're doing just one job a day, mm -hmm. making $250, uh, $250 a day, mm -hmm. like you are, I think um, last time I looked it up, like only the top 15% of all Americans make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. So instantly like starting a pallet business takes you from wherever you are to the mm -hmm. top 15% mm -hmm. of earners mm -hmm. in the United States. That's before you hired a tech and started mm -hmm. scaling the business and doing mm -hmm. seal systems and everything else. Yeah, yeah, it, it, uh, it definitely uh, put you out there. And I, like I said, I didn't realize that, uh, cause I looked at, I was looking at YouTube and Instagram I thought everybody made a hundred thousand dollars a year because <laughs> if, if you looked at it, you see like everybody was making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would tell people about uh, plans repair, and they they wouldn't. They said, "No, nah, ain't no money in that." Mm -hmm. So I I thought uh, I thought everybody was making money until we started doing the class, yeah. and I, I started seeing people quitting their jobs, and I saw people coming back telling me, "No, nah, I won't make no money." I said, "Dog, go!" I thought everybody was making a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, eighty nine. Doctor Funk said took him. Uh, uh, two hours to do his first uh uh third part. I uh, do his first ice maker, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Eight, nine. Doctor Funk says just do nine to five, one call per day. Um, what's we call uh C Tech Key? I'm just scheduling one per day after work and <laughs> it's stressing him out already. Yeah. Now, when you first start, uh, that's all you can do is one or two stops per day. That's all you can do. How long should how long should they be at that level? As somebody that's an OG in the game, mm -hmm. at what point what should you say that if you still doing one stop a day, mm -hmm. then maybe you doing something wrong? Um, maybe at the what is it months? Is it a year or? Well, it, it's going to depend on the uh, uh it should it, it's going to depend on the amplitude of the person how mm -hmm. uh, how how mechanically inclined they are and uh, uh, how much. Uh, how much attention to detail that they're actually paying. Um, I found out even the worst, the worst of text that I've had after about uh, after about maybe 50 to 60 service calls, 
um, I could get them up to three to five stops per day. Um, okay. um, and some people, that's all they're going to do. Some people who are very good at it, they can do eight to 10. Um, um, we, when I was younger, so 50 or 60, cause I'm, I'm just slowing it down. So mm. 10 weeks we did 40. Mm. So, okay. How many months is that? So definitely before, by the time the end of your first year, you should. Oh yeah. By the end of, if, uh, uh, by the, by the end of your, uh, it'd be, it'd be probably about this, about the second month. Because okay. what happens, you're going to start off doing one service call per day uh, for the first week or so. Mm -hmm. By the second week, you're going to be doing two because you're going to go out and diagnose a new one, but you're going to be putting a part on the second okay. one. So it's going to double up. And uh, most of these guys, they're doing Saturdays and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. So after about the first month or so, they get up to where they're doing about three or four stops. And that's why um, you notice uh, most of the time now, at about the third or fourth month, they're quitting their job. They 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 got their confidence is up. They're mm -hmm. making enough money. They realize that they can do it. Uh, they know they're gonna have enough work coming in. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, um, it's hard. Uh, as they say, the uh, the uh, mute and left the stable. Now it's hard mm -hmm. to put them back in. It's hard to go to work every day yeah. knowing that you uh, you don't have to be there. That you can make more money in one stop than being there all day. And after that, it's, it, um, they're ready to leave. Yeah. And, and if you never started any business, for the people that's watching, that's fast. As somebody that has started several businesses, mm -hmm. like, yeah, to say within your first year, you start off, you already on track uh, to have six figures by the end of that first year. Because uh, the way you said it's going to double up and just yeah. scale itself, essentially, mm -hmm. if you follow the blueprint. And then the second year, mm -hmm. you well equipped to maybe hire on at least one tech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, uh, Greg B said this is going to have a newbie confused because the chance of getting eight calls a day every day of the week is highly unlikely. Um, you, uh, you, you can get those. If you go out and sign up with six or seven different third-party warranty companies, tell all of them to turn you on, and then you have somebody like Choice, <laughs> who <laughs> Choice will send you 10 in one day. <laughs> Choice will send it to you. If you were to go and uh, like some people go and they'll sign up for home advisor, home advisor will send you 10. If you had like your web page up and running, you, you can you can pull eight calls per day uh, if you if you market it correctly. Uh, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Um, and if you if, no, you can get with a marketing company and they can bring you eight to 10 stops. So they can bring you how many calls you want per day. Um, but uh, you got to you got to have the capacity to be able to get them out. Yeah, you're not going to do that. You might not do that in one warranty company. Ah, I take that back. I take that back. I take that back. Um, uh, in a busy time, and if you are the preferred vendor in a, in a uh, in that in, in that uh, city, you can you can you can you can you can get you can get uh, you can get you can get over eight service stops per day. Uh, if you're the preferred vendor, you can get over eight stops per day. Um, American Home Shield. Yes. Yeah, that sound like a lot though. Yeah, yeah American uh, American Home Shield. If you you was in the Raleigh area and you're the preferred vendor, you you, you they dump eight stops on you. Somebody probably getting eight stops now in the Raleigh area because I'm I'm on I'm on hold and a lot of people on hold because we just we just booked out so far. So uh, but somebody somebody probably getting it. And I had not had a bunch of texts and I had uh and I had uh and I was taking everything that was coming through. Uh, yeah, I, I would have times where uh, I would get like eight stops or more per day. When you said uh, if you're a preferred vendor, do you mind explaining what is a preferred vendor? How do you become a preferred vendor? Uh, a prefer if you're new. The preferred vendor is usually the cheapest person in the area. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you uh, you uh, no, they they put a couple other stipulations in there. You know your uh, your uh, your your score that the customer gives you and stuff mm -hmm. like that. The recall rate, but those uh, those carry very little weight when they actually uh, when they actually comes up who's going to be preferred vendor. Okay. The thing that carries the most weight is your cost per call. Okay. So if your cost per call is usually the cheapest in the area, then they're going to make you the preferred vendor. They're going to send you the calls. First. That sounds like a bad thing because if you're not charging enough, you're going to go out of business. Right. right. So, so that you don't want to be the preferred vendor. Most of the time, you're not going to be the preferred vendor okay. uh, when you charge and why I tell you to charge. So what happened? The preferred vendor. Um, most of the time, they might be somebody who might have 10 or 15 technicians. Oh, okay. uh, so once you start getting a, a bunch of technicians, you can actually start to come down on your cost per call because what happened, you're spreading the cost of the business across 10 or 15 people. Mm -hmm. So the cost of your uh, your admin, the cost of your insurance, 
all that stuff is going to be spread amongst uh, 10 or 15 people. So you can actually bring your cost per call down. Um, but if you're just starting out. So if you're a one man, one woman operation and you will prefer a vendor, you probably not doing you, you, you're gonna, you, you won't be, you'll be a preferred vendor for a little while, but you're going to be <laughs> out of business before long too. Yeah. And so that's some of the things where people, when they, uh, I get calls after about the second month, they'll say my third party warranty rep, tell me I got to bring my call down, my calls mm -hmm. down. Yeah, he's gonna tell you bring your calls down because you're gonna be a little higher than everybody. Um, and you're gonna probably gonna get the the calls, uh, you're gonna get the calls that nobody else can fix stuff. It's gonna go to two, two or three different people, then they'll come to you. So you're gonna get those calls, but who cares? You're still gonna make your 250 off of them. Mm -hmm. So you just gonna you just gonna make the 250 and um you're gonna you're gonna set in the set in that sweet spot where they're gonna send you two or three stops per day. Oh. And that and you get two or three three companies doing that and you're doing marketing for yourself you know you'll fill up your you fill up your uh, day pretty easy mm -hmm. but uh you want to sit there and and charge the 250 so you're making enough money where you actually making it and you uh you're you're not actually going out of business okay yeah so uh hey how you doing perry jones okay uh right away applause hey how you doing charge up service i'm uh, fortunate to be able to go uh uh, for Southeast Raleigh to the governor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from uh, Southeast Raleigh to the governor. Yeah, the governor's place is great. Uh, uh, only thing I didn't like, uh, I, I ain't been out there in a while, but uh, you couldn't, uh, at the governor's club, I don't think you could come out there until like 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. And if, it, uh, if, it, uh, if you ran, and if, it, if you went into like a mud puddle and, and you, uh, you drove on the street, and uh, you had like your tractor, your, your car tire put mud on the streets, then you got to come back and wash the streets off. Oh, shoot. Yeah, <laughs> you have to wash the streets off because you didn't want to put no mud there because they make you come back and clean the streets. Yeah, they, uh, they, that's good. That's uh, that's where uh, all the, uh, like, uh, Roy Williams and all them live at. Hey, how you doing, Tim? Applause. Good to see you in here, man. All right. Uh, uh, no Limit 3. What if you wanted to start off part time and mostly do it on the weekend? Uh, yeah, you can start off part time, but the thing is, when you talk about you just want to do it on the weekend, uh, people appliances they don't care if it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday, they're going to break, and people are going to want to have them fixed. And not many people are going to wait until the weekend for you to come fix their refrigerator or their washer and dryer. You know, most most families they got two or three kids. The wife is washing clothes every day. And so that wash your break, they're gonna call, they wanna get somebody out there right then and there. So uh you can um if you're doing it on the weekend, uh you're gonna you're gonna be real selective of the people who gonna wait that long. And so if you go out there on Saturday and diagnose it, have to order a part, you can't come back for a week. Uh, I don't know how many people are gonna wait that long. Um, when will it be another boot camp hands-on course? We're doing them in January, but we already sold out for January and I think even February. Um, I scheduled January, February, and March. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, so we already sold out there already. Uh, Bianca Griffin, does North Carolina require you to have a vendor? Now you don't have to have a license to do uh, appliance repair. There's no uh, no uh, license required in appliance repair. Um, you need to have general liability insurance uh, to protect you and to uh, protect the customer. Um, uh, but I say start off with the third party warranty companies to learn the trade. Uh, but no, nah, I require. I, I I suggest that you uh, start an LLC also, so you can take advantage of the tax breaks and also a protection. Uh, but yeah, there's no vendor license needed for uh, uh, appliance repair. Uh, all right, uh, they say thanks, JT, for putting them up on the game. Hey, thank y'all for tuning in, man. Smash the like button if you haven't done so already. Yeah. Share this video. All that good stuff YouTube wants you to do. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh. Uh, is there a cheaper way to get the Kelly Blue Book? Is uh, good Lord, you making enough money? Uh, <laughs> one service the Blue Book is, is less than two hundred dollars, uh, if I recall. Uh, uh, you make enough money, you, you buy it, buy it. Uh, that's the thing now too. When you when you in business like this, uh, you ain't you're not paying for this stuff. You passing it on to the customer. So uh, uh, you buy it and let the uh, and, and that that cost get passed on to your customer. You, you gotta have it. Just go buy it. It's not worth it. Just uh, just the three ninety nine is gone with once you get into the business. All right, eight one eight, you're on. Eight one eight, you're on. Uh, you make enough money. 
818. Hi. Yes, I just want to say thank you for the content. Um, Mr. Sneed and JT put me on you from his YouTube okay. channel. But I am located in California, mm -hmm. and they require a trade license when I sign up for the home warranty company. And I just wanted to know, is, is it that I need to wait completely for the license to come through to get any type of service calls? Well, clearly I can't do anything with the home warranty companies. Um, I okay. went through American Shield, and they're the ones who told me I needed to apply for a license to begin with. Okay. And when well, you say, uh, did, did a representative tell you that or on the application, did they have a um, license number? Um, on the on the application, they had a license number. I sent back in the application without a license number, and they contacted me and sent me the information as far as California's um, requirement for the trade license. Uh, California, uh, what, what is the trade license they, they require for it in California? It's called a bear license. It's for um, home movers and appliance repair and sales. All right, let me look that up. Yeah, uh, uh, BER license? BEHR. BEHR. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Is, uh, what is it? Is it like a license to do business or is, is it a trade it's license? A, it's a trade license for appliance repair um, for mover com moving companies and appliance sales in the state of California. Uh, I see repair. Do you have to take a test or just pay the money? You just have to pay the money, but they're on oh, a backlog. Oh, okay. um, I've been waiting oh, for okay. like probably two months. How much is? Let me see how much. How much is it? One hundred and ninety. California rape y'all. You gotta have a license to even alter your houses. Look like in, in California. Jesus Again, Christ. thank you for the program. <laughs> My husband and I are both doing it. Well, we both did it already. And uh, we already have our LLC insurance, uh, and we were signing up for the home warranty company. And this is uh, the um, this is kind of where we are. Miss, did you say uh, you heard about it through my channel? This is JT talking. Yes, sir. Yes, do sir. I had technically watched. I do. DM me. What's your name again? Okay. What's my your name Instagram? Is name? What's, what's your Instagram oh. name? N i k k o j o y. Okay. DM me. And I'll give you the 190 for you and uh and your husband. I'll cash out both of y'all the 190 tonight. That's big wow. money there. <laughs> nice. Thank you. I got you though. <laughs> yeah. And you said it's wow. Nico. Is is Nico Nico Joy. N-I-K-K-O-J-O-Y. All right. DM me on Instagram and I'll give you 190 for you, 190 for him to uh to get your life. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I appreciate the content you both put out. It's oh, truly inspiring it. and everything else. I right, think nobody else called me and said that. <laughs> I'm, not not believe, I'm not believing anybody else. <laughs> like, she the only one getting it. Yeah. You should have been the first one to call. Yeah. Now, what part of California are you in? I'm San Diego. San Diego. I love San Diego. Uh, that's a beautiful place. Um, but yeah, uh, sorry y'all got to have that in California. It, it doesn't. I looked at it. There's no test involved. It's like it's just a fee. Just uh, it is. Uh, it's just a fee. It's just but a it's, fee. it's been backlogged. Ah, uh, because they closed so, because of cat or uh, COVID. Yes. Ah, uh, wow. How about your LLC? Was that backlogged too, or? No, I I did my LLC previous to even signing up with the um, home warranty company. Because I mean, with the with the license, because I didn't know about the license yeah. until signing up with the home warranty company. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you got to so do that. My question yeah. is, go ahead. because my state requires the license to even go through home warranty, per se, does that also mean I would have to wait for, let's say, home advisor? Uh, uh, no, you probably wouldn't have. I don't know. I, I, I won't say that. But I, I wouldn't advise, if you never repaired appliances before, uh, I wouldn't advise going through home advisor first. Um, you okay. want so to wait go, for everything. Yeah. You want to go through. to a third party warranty company and actually go through that first, because what happened that protects you and the customer. If you go out there and misdiagnose something, you just call it a third party warranty company, tell them to send you a new part and the customer don't have to pay any more money. You don't have to buy a new part out your pocket. Uh, so that's why I, I, I suggest going that way. Um, but in the meantime, you can do, uh, uh, I don't know, California crazy. You could do dryer vent cleaning and um, uh, you could do that. 
you could do some drive-in cleaning. Okay. You, you could send out some stuff for blender repairs and stuff. But uh, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't go out and do any repairs until you actually uh, uh, got in with the third-party warranty company and get your get your training there first. Okay. Well, again, thank you for your time, and thank I will you. be DMing you, Mr. Yeah, JT, DMing you right and now. I appreciate go, everything. Go enjoy. All right. Yeah. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 We only got a couple more minutes, and then we're going to slide off. Uh, right. Greg, yeah, when you pick up on this going to your nine to five, it's extremely hard. i will miss a, a, a days a week before I quit. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, I, I, like I said, uh, right before I quit my last job, I had started doing appliance uh, repair uh, full time, and um, it got to the point I would come in late. I leave for uh, at my lunchtime. I don't care what was going on. We'd be in a meeting. I'd go change, go do some appliance repair. Then I'd leave. It, uh, when it was time for me to leave, I left. I want no staying over, getting nothing done. Yeah. I, it was at the point I I, 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 I left months before I really left. Uh, girly girl, uh, cool. You know I'm only four stops in, <laughs> uh, but uh, that's a, a short flat box. Okay, yeah. Up for... Um, yeah, Okafe. Yeah, if you're the cheapest vendor, you won't be there long. Okay, uh, Slick said he got seven of them today. Okay. Nope. Yeah. Uh, Capello's appliance repair. How much should we charge for out of area trip charge? Uh, I try not to go out of area. <laughs> I have enough work that I, I try not to go outside of the area trip charge. But if you are going to go out there, if you need to just fill your work, uh, see how long it's going to take you windshield time to drive out there and drive back and just add that uh, uh, into your $85 per hour. Uh, you know you're going to have to do it twice because you got to go out there and diagnose, and then you have to go back out there to put the part on. So whatever time you're going to spend driving out there, just charge them $85 per hour. Uh, uh, but I, I try not to go outside of my trip area. Um, I, I, I want to, I, I want to spend as less time as possible driving, uh, because I found out that I, you know, the time you spent driving out there, you could have done two service job, uh, jobs. Um, and if you, if you just wait, believe it or not, your, your schedule will fill up. All right. Let's see what else we got. <laughs> uh, California and New York are ran by communists. All right. All right. Oh, I know. I know one thing I want to clear up too, Mike. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm just getting hurt. Uh, if I get the cash, that we'll do it on live. Uh -huh. Um, shout out to my boy Casino is the name. He did a video with uh two two gentlemen that came through appliance boot camp, mm -hmm. and they've been getting a lot of slack for mm -hmm. it ever since, uh -huh. right? So now that everybody, well, not everybody, but now that a lot of people are here, like uh -huh. ideally, uh, I just want to address it publicly. Mm -hmm. It is no beef, right? right? And I just want to hear your thoughts on. Um, because they were telling me that they saw a previous live stream mm -hmm. where you was embracing people to go out and do the training. So, right. you know what I mean? So I was like, man, I don't know why they even thought that, mm -hmm. but I was like, you know, one thing that we could clear up is definitely how you feel about mm -hmm. other people doing the training as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't, uh, like I said before, yeah, we, we need more, especially African-Americans getting into the skilled trades. We definitely need a lot more uh, African-Americans getting into the skilled trade. Um, uh, like I said before, with them doing the course, um, I don't mind them doing the course if they're teaching it from their point of view, um, something totally different than, um, than the course that I've, I've put out there. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So if, 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 from their point of view, uh, cause everybody does it a little different, um, say, uh, uh, like for instance, I, I'm just going to pull, uh, Miss Ward out, Miss Ward, even though she came to the course. She actually uh, run her uh, appliance repair business totally different than the way I would run. I ran mine, where she uh, she she deals a lot with the credit. She deals a whole lot with the uh, with the uh, uh, with the yachts and stuff down there. So with that, if she was to put a course in there, and she does a lot, she does a lot with um, bringing in uh, uh, license holders and stuff. I've never done that. So if she was doing all of the stuff that she's incorporated and put it in, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that that's totally great. Um, from um, Gerard and Will, yep. yeah, Gerard and Real. Uh, I had never seen the course. I still haven't seen the course. But if there, uh, I know Gerard had his uh, scratch and dent store and stuff down yep. there. So if they're doing their stuff, 
based upon how they actually took some of Applause boot camp and, and, and mixed it up and made their own thing. I have no problem with that. And um, like I said, we need to, we need, it's enough room out here for everybody. Uh, we need a, a lot more, uh, especially African Americans getting into the skilled trades and getting into uh, actual entrepreneurship. Um, I think in the next 10 to 15 years, um, our whole, um, our whole community is going to change because of the work that you were putting in with, uh, with JT Hustles and your channel and everybody that's coming through here who's now getting into entrepreneurship. I think uh, all of that's going to change and we got to, we got to bring people in. We got to uh, bring people in. Um, um, and like I say, everybody fixes it a little different. If they do it and put their spin on it, I have, I have no problem at all with it. No yeah. problem at all. So stop cyberbullying with <laughs> guys, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have yeah. no, I have no problem. Um, like I say, I, I haven't seen their course, but uh, if they're doing it from their, uh, their point of view, I have no problem, at, uh, problem at all with it. Uh, so. Um, but yeah, when, do you know when they're coming out with it or are they still putting it together? I, I know they, they want to wait till after COVID because mm -hmm. they don't want to have, you know, mm -hmm. somebody come to, to their training. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it's from their perspective on mm -hmm. it, but they don't want nobody to come out and, mm -hmm. and something happens and mm -hmm. it's associated with people getting sick. So yeah. it'll definitely be when the powers that be say that we can all gather again. Yeah. Right. And they'll have, you know, an online and a face. -to -face. Yeah. And let me tell you this. They will sue you too. I, I'll show JT. I got, I got my first lawsuit. Uh, somebody sued me because of, uh, applies boot camp. Uh, if you're looking at it, uh, today was the day he, he, uh, they, uh, that the lawyer told me that they go, if, I, if I didn't make amends today, they're going to go case. There's an open case. <laughs> I don't care about it. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, he got, uh, I had a guy actually send me, uh, 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 a lawyer sent me a lawsuit saying I better open up appliance boot camp now, <laughs> now that, uh, the, that the school systems and stuff are open, that uh, I need to be open now to come to court come, so he can come in and take his course. So he actually had a lawyer to send me a letter saying, I need to open up right now. I better not wait till next year. And he gave me till to today to actually open. So I'm not open. So uh, uh, go ahead and tell her to send the, send the other letter now too, because I'm still not going to open until, <laughs> till next year. But uh, yeah, so uh, I definitely got to be careful with the COVID. And like I say, uh, you, can do, uh, you, you got some crazy people out here on the internet. You got, uh, uh, you got some crazy people out here on the internet. So. Yeah. So um, uh, uh, they, they, they can start to cyber bully you and stuff like that. Uh, please don't do that to them. Uh, but if, if that guy, uh, I ain't calling his name, you can cyber bully him. I, <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. The thoughts and opinion of this show, <laughs> Mike Sleeve, yeah, no representation. Yeah. I'm anti-cyber Yeah, so yeah, I, I got I sent, the, the lawyer sent me, sent me the letter saying I better open uh, by uh, uh, November the 23rd, or they're gonna pursue and sue me for uh, uh, uh for not uh, for not because COVID is not real and uh, I need to open up. <laughs> so, uh, but you we've been here, COVID not real? yeah, he's, uh, okay. he's yeah, 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 that's another, yeah, another he, episode. yeah, he, he uh, he said he called the governor's office mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and the governor told him that uh, he could still come into the state, the state won't close. And uh, I need to open up because the school system and the universities are open. So, <laughs> so uh, once again, uh, we've been here an hour now. Um, I want to thank everybody for, uh, 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 for joining in. I want to thank JT for uh, stopping Always, through. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, uh, right now, yeah, no doubt. Uh, we got Thanksgiving coming up. Uh, I don't know. I might go live. Uh, I, 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 matter of fact, uh, I'll probably have something pre-recorded because um, uh, my wife and them, we're going to do something at our house. Just, uh, just, our, just our inner family, not, uh, not nobody coming out. Uh, so we're going to do something at the house. And I'm, I'm going to take that time to spend with my family. Uh, so I'll be coming back next Monday live again. But uh, I have something, uh, something pre-recorded coming up uh, uh, for Thursday. Uh, any closing words, JT? Uh, hey, smash the like button, share this video, all that good stuff that, that helps the analytics growing uh, mm -hmm. the channel. Um, Mike is going to start a podcast. Uh -huh. Be sure to follow his podcast. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're not doing so, uh, also follow JT Us's podcast. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Oh, uh, one last thing, because it don't reset, refund his money. I, if he had called me like that, I would, 
<laughs> but, but if he when he said the lawyer, nah, we got we got you got to fight it out now. So uh once again, thank y'all for uh uh, uh for uh calling in. Thank y'all for watching.